Hello Internet, and welcome to Crate Entertainment's Grim Dawn Livestream. I'm Zenta, your host from the forums, and I'm here to answer your burning questions and of course troll the fuck out of you. I take it you guys liked my uh, theme song? How are you guys doing today? I see there's already a lot of you in here. I'm going to do my best to keep up with the chat while I'm presenting what, I'm, what I've got to show you today. So if I miss your question, I'm sorry. Try maybe posting it on the forum and maybe another member of the community will be, have the answer you need or I might even chime in myself. But um, I take it you guys are here for some news. I mean, I guess we could get the elephant in the room out of the way, right? So if you've been on Reddit recently, on the Grimdon subreddit, you might have seen some things about number 10. So why don't we talk about number 10? 10 reasons why Grim Dawn is great. For example, each update has over 45 item changes. Step right now, count them all, I guarantee it. There's Arcane Heroes. You can't reroll affixes. Mutator just debuff the player. Two words, stacks of potions. Your auras hide your characters. No loot beams. Too much loot. So many epic items. And of course, my absolute favorite, 789. So now that we got 10 out of the way, let's talk about 1.2. This, as I've mentioned in our announcements before, is probably Grimno's most comprehensive update to date. And when I mean comprehensive, I mean we're covering so much of the game in this, in this um, edition. Um, everything from the loot drops to new accessibility features, new mechanics from the Grim Internals mod that people have been using that apparently doesn't work so well anymore, and a um, whole bunch of other things that we haven't even talked about yet. And of course there's the stuff that will come after 1.2 that we'll talk about later today. Is there time for questions? Um, absolutely. If you want to throw some questions in the chat, I'm going to do my best to keep up with you guys, like I said. It seems like there's a lot of you in here today. I think you guys are expecting something cool. Will 1.2 feature engine update to modernize Grim Dawn? It could do new animation sounds, textures. Um, so it is not like a comprehensive engine update, if that's what you're thinking. Uh, we are still working on our own Gr Grim Dawn 2 engine, the Crate engine, which will feature for um, RTS and games beyond that. But that's still in the works. There's programmers working on that every day. And it's not quite ready for um, anything to preview for that. My god, this chat. I might actually have to enable slow mode in a bit. Um, in terms of animation, sounds, textures, um, we are actually working on upresing some texture stuff, so we'll see, kind of see what we get in there to make the game look a little bit sexier. Yes, if you're looking at my UI, there are some changes to the HUD. You want to say thank you for the consistent support for the game. You want to ask a question. Crucible right now, there's no way to get bonus skill points. 21 from all difficulties from campaign. Do you have any plans adding that option through potions or blessing? Thanks. So those rewards are tied to quests in the campaign. So in order to put them in the crucible, we would have to fundamentally change how quest rewards are kind of tallied. So we kind of did that a little bit with the difficulty skips, but to do that in the crucible as well would be complicated. And it wasn't really ever the intent for you to place crucible exclusively. I guess if that's something people really want, we can consider it. How's my day going? Well, pretty great so far. I mean, there's a lot of you here to watch me, and what more can I ask for today? I honestly wasn't sure how many of you would show up. Especially on, like, what is it? Well, it's 1 p.m. here. Who knows what time it is for you? Grim Dawn 2 engine. Well, yeah, if there's a, if there's a Grim Dawn 2 in the future, you know, in theory, one might say that new engine is going to be running it. Alright, chat, 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 chat. Thanks for Grim Dawn. This game has helped so much in, in life last year. Just can't thank the team enough. I'm honestly glad to hear that. That's like the, the kind of stories we hear from people sometimes where the game has helped them through a tough time in life. Like, that's all you can really ask for as a game developer. Half the time we feel like we're just wasting people's time. Like, well, they're playing a video game. Nothing's really coming out of that. But that's not always necessarily true. It Games help people in a way that's not always very tangible. Any chance of seasons? Well, actually, there's some great seasons that are already being run by the community. I'm honestly not sure we could do better than they are. They've done a fantastic job. I think I almost got off of the chat. Will patch 1.2 have new devotions? 
patch 1.2 will not have new devotions, but let's talk about patch 1.2. So if you're looking at my UI over here, you can see that I've got new buttons right over the level level here, E and R. And there's actually a third one that's in the middle that's a little blank right now, and there's a reason for that. Uh, so E and R are, are new dedicated potion buttons. The reason being is that potions no longer exist in your inventory. So if you had like five stacks of potions of, of each kind, they're gone. No more potion management. In patch 1.2, potions are infinite. They're available baseline to all characters. You can just press those buttons. You can either press them on the HUD or you can press the hotkeys and they'll work just like they used to before. Uh, that button in the middle is a feature we actually haven't talked about yet for 1.2 and that is the addition of a baseline evasion ability. So it's as as other action RPGs have come out in the market, we've kind of noticed that there's been a new standard for having a baseline evasion ability, and we feel like Grimdon could use that too. So our plan, and we'll see how that all works out, we're still kind of working on that, and that's just why it's currently blank, is that we're going to add a baseline evasion ability for everybody, regardless of which version of the game you own, and people that own Forgotten Gods will be able to upgrade that evasion ability with the runes from that expansion. So you no longer be applying anything to an, a metal uh, as an augment, you'll instead be applying it to that ability, replacing it. I'm excited for a new close competitor, Titan Quest 2. Do you have aces and sleeps to bring it bring in later? I mean, I am excited for any action RPG to come out. I am a huge fan of action RPGs. I want to check them all out when they come out because I want something to scratch that itch, you know? I want something new and exciting to, to give me something fun to do. So every time there's a new action RPG, I definitely check it out. I checked out Diablo 4, checked out Path of Exile, I'm gonna check out Path of Exile 2. And I will check out Titan Quest 2 when it comes out, and honestly, I hope it's a good game. Bringing more people into the action RPG genre is only good for us. It's not like someone's gonna play Titan Quest 2 and they're never gonna touch any Grim Dawn again. Like, people eventually get bored of a game and they check out other things in the genre. So there's really no downsides here. So honestly, hope it's a good game. I wish them luck. Grimdon helped you through the D4 launch. I'm glad. Basilla and Score of Body Pillows when? I will have to look into that option. It's kind of funny. I've actually looked into getting more merch, and I've reached out to some like digital stores that handle game merch, and they never even got back to me. I guess we're not cool enough for that. You're addicted to WoW and figured it on, you're not addicted to it anymore. <laughs> um, another thing I want to talk about of 1.2, something that you guys will probably love. So you can see I'm covered in all these toggled buffs. We've actually added a bunch more options for you to control that stuff. You can see the, the, the c control options have been updated. There's actually a new tab. But in this one, you can toggle self auras. And if I toggle that, look at that. All invisible. So you can actually see your character, all that cool armor you've collected. Again, this is purely optional. Oh, and for the people that might be missing that clock, because the clock is gone, that is right here, display time. And now it's actually just going to be permanently on if you wanted to. So if you ever had to click that clock every time you were playing on a character, you could just toggle in your settings and you'll always have the time available. Release date on next patch. So we'll talk about when 1.2 is going to playtest very soon, and then we'll, we can kind of figure out when it's going to go out. I, I expect it'll be out in the early fall. I think late summer at this point is pretty unlikely because I want this playtest to run for a while and make sure that we're ironing out all the kings. Because as I mentioned, this patch is huge. There's a lot of features in here and we want to make sure we're testing them all. But playtest is very soon, don't worry. Mind blown. <laughs> No more alcoholic dedicated bag. How many potions were you storing? Does it stay L1, R1 on the control? Yeah, so if you're playing with a controller, the control binds haven't changed. Potions are still L1, R1. You have a thousand potions. You can't do this to you. You know what you have sacrificed? Well, I'm guessing you sacrificed a lot of money. I got the chat today. Sorry, I'm I'm not I'm not used to keeping up with this. Like I, last time we had a stream this big was when we were announcing an expansion. It's like you guys are expecting something today. Option to have potions on zero nine as they are now. 
Um, that isn't currently the plan since we just wanted to free those up. You could rebind those buttons to 9 and 0 if you want. 10 equals 10 new crucible waves. Interesting theory. So in addition to th things like hiding your buffs, there's also countdown cooldown timers. So let's see if we can put a cooldown skill on the bar here. Cooldown timers on. When you activate a cooldown, that's going to count down for you. Much easier to read than that little gray swipe. Can you literally go sell all your HP mana potions? If you're really, really smart about it, I suppose you could sell them right before the patch drops, and then you could make that money back, I suppose. But with 1.2 stuff, um, probably the thing that took the longest by far was a complete overhaul to our loot tables. We're talking about going through hundreds, if not thousands, of data entries and cleaning up the loot tables in the game. And what do I mean by that? I mean like 30 to 60% less items dropping on the screen. We got rid of a ton of junk. We got rid of all those potions that you've, you've been dropping. And what we did to compensate for that is we increased the quality of the loot. So I, you are getting less items, but those items will be a higher quality. So you're talking about a higher chance of getting a double rare affix, for example. And even though there's going to be less items on the screen, we still thought it might be a good idea to have some loot beams. And that was really loud. I'm going to turn the theme sound down. Oops. How about that for a loot beam? And of course, that epics. And then we wanted to make sure that monster and frequents were differentiated on the ground as well. So if you just get a regular old mo monster and frequent, it's going to have this nice new little symbol for you so you can tell that it dropped amongst all those other greens. But if you get a double rare monster and frequent, then it looks like this. Likewise, if you get a double rare green item. And if you look on the minimap, you can actually see that they're labeled on there right for you. So if you missed anything along the way, you can see it's going to get marked. Can we keep the clock on the HUD? You like being able to mouse over to see the time without having it stuck on the screen. Yeah, that's kind of tough. So we had to make room for the new stuff on the HUD, and the clock was kind of a bit superfluous. So I'm sorry that's not currently an option. I guess we could look into an alternative for you. I'm not really sure I can promise that right now though. What does double rare mean? A double rare means that it has a rare prefix and a rare suffix, which is one of the strongest items you can get in the game. So if one of those drops for you, you're going to be able to tell. A special icon, loot beam, and a drop sound. Now if you want to filter some items out, those loot beams will be hidden. So if I filtered out epic items, or sorry, legendary items, as you can see, the loot beams are no longer visible. So if those loot beams are bothering you, and you really don't want to see a particular type of item, you don't want to see those blue loot beams at all, and you don't want to see epics, you can toggle that stuff off. Less trash items equal less iron farm, right. So, correct. Less items farmed means less iron bits. So, to compensate again, we've increased the amount of iron bits that will be dropping from monsters and loot chests quite significantly. So you have, you have to worry less about picking all that stuff up, sending it to a vendor to make money, because you'll just make money as you're playing. And again, another convenience feature. And you're going to be spending less uh, iron bits on potions, I suppose. If runes aren't on metals now, do we get other metal augments? Well, that certainly does leave us room for that, doesn't it? Does the same apply to scrap? Uh, are you turning a lot of items to scrap of the, the, of the inventor? I guess we can consider buffing that up too. Any stash updates? Maybe, maybe. Rainbow filter included. We are not currently planning to include, include the rainbow filter, but I do hear that that is a pretty popular option. You love GD and it's and it's your Steam Deck go-to. Will one want to do anything for the Steam Deck users? 
Um, so I think as far as I can tell, there's only two issues on the Steam Deck for Grim Dawn. There's some issues with the UI fitting, and I think there are some font issues. That's the only reason we aren't actually approved on the Steam Deck. Um, I don't know if that'll make 1.2, but we are going to at least investigate solving those problems for you. Does the less loot affect monster frequent drop rates? On the contrary, it actually means that bosses will be dropping their monster frequents 100% of the time. That's another feature in 1.2. Do we have a plan to address the component bloat? You have a whole stash full of all kinds of components that can or can't be combined. Um, I guess we should come up with more ways to spend them for crafting. How about we leave the questions for last and do like a Q&A later Are we, as we go through 1.2 stuff that you want to show today. Don't worry, I'll get through it all. And if you miss anything in this stream, don't worry. We are going to record this. We're going to put it up on YouTube. We're going to be summarizing a lot of what's been talked about today on our website. So if you need to leave early, don't worry. You will not miss a thing. Loyalist pack for gun skins. I can see doing another loyalist pack in the future. We have some ideas for some cool armor sets. I guess we should, we could look into doing um, some gun stuff too. Any plans for PS5 version? Uh, we don't have any other ports to announce at this time. Item quality and leveling process too are only in hard difficulty. So in terms of how many items are dropping and the quality of them, that's across the board. At every difficulty, item quality has been increased, particularly on the harder difficulties. So, which brings us to another feature of 1.2. You will be able to play up to level 100 on any of the three difficulties. So if you want to play casually and you want to play the level 100 on normal, you will have that option. The level scaling has been updated to support that. So on normal difficulty, you're not going to be able to get to level 100 in any area. It's only going to be select regions of the game. So because you're not going to be able to go back to Devil's Crossing and everything will be level 100. Things will still stop at certain levels on normal difficulty. But on Elite and Ultimate, they will scale up everywhere. And on Ultimate difficulty, they actually already do, so that's not really a change at all. Grim Dawn devs and Grim Dawn, wow. Have we used the loot filter in last epoch? It, last epoch. It is incredibly versatile and amazing, and you should see the kind of loot filter in Grim Dawn. I have not looked at their loot filter recently. I guess I have to take another look. Now, okay. Onwards to more features in 1.2. Let's see, what did I miss? Ah. Relic crafting. Anyone that's crafted a tier 3 relic in Grim Dawn might say it's a bit tedious. It was kind of a cool idea in, in theory to have it just be this big complex web of, of crafting to make a tier 3 relic, but, in, but to actually do it wasn't all that fun. And we feel that there's it's time to streamline that. So in 1.2 all the relic recipes have been completely streamlined It'll take way less stuff to make them, and, it'll, and it's going to be in a progression that kind of makes sense for a character that's leveling up. So you might make a cold relic that's tier 1, upgrade it to a tier 2 cold relic, and then move on to a tier 3 cold relic that might be specific to your class. Will boss, um, boss bug skills be... Is that like card control? I mean, it seems like a language thing. Will they be addressed at some point? Things like... Alexa's Flash Freeze not working on them. Um, so one thing we're trying in 1.2 that's currently that's going to be in the playtest, so we'll see how it works out. But we are adding freeze resistance reduction to both Alexa's Flash Freeze and Blade Trap. So enemies that are at least partially immune to those crowd controls will be susceptible to those skills baseline. So if you've been playing Endgame, you might know that the Mage Slayer set, for example, makes um, Alexa's Flesh Freeze viable against bosses for very short windows. So the idea is to take some of that and put it into the base skill. So Mage Slayer will still be better at doing that, but the base skill will be viable at least for very brief windows in, in card controlling bosses. Can we have a table displayed on screen, maybe toggleable to show incoming and outgoing DPS plus damage types? So we saw that Grim Tunnels has a, a damage meter. We are not planning to make that an official feature. That is extremely niche, and I get that people that are trying to min-max a build they're creating do like that. I acknowledge that fully, but as far as a feature for an action RPG, it just seemed like a little too much. At least baseline.
is the reason why freeze res reduction stacks while trap res reduction does not. Um, they both work exactly the same, so I don't know what you mean. Release patch now! Maybe. <laughs> have you thought about updating the textures? Not sure if you've seen the Grim Text mod. I have seen the Grim Text mod. Um, I mean, it's really cool what they're doing. Um, I'm not sure that's something that we're going to do right now. We are, Like I said, we are upgrading some stuff. Like, for example, you might have seen a certain snow texture being up updated in a, in a recent post we've made. So it's, it's not that we're not doing that at all, but it's sort of more selective. Are there any planned updates for modders? For example, an update set of tools, a new modding guide, video stream, like before, etc. So <laughs> in terms of tools for, for modders, I want to make it absolutely clear that the tools the modders have right now are the same tools where we used to make the game. So you're not getting better tools because th this is the tools we got. Like it doesn't get better, unfortunately, <laughs> or fortunately, depending on your point of view. However, we do have some goodies for modders this patch, some pretty big ones if you are a modder. So those of you out there that have been making like big mod packs or have been adding onto the game world, I have very good news for you. So previously the limit on the world map size was two gigabytes. Turned out that was a problem we could actually solve relatively easily and that limit is going to be increased to four which means double the world size. So just to put in perspective the Forgotten Gods world, the one that includes you know base Grim Dawn, Ashes of Malmuth, and Forgotten Gods all in one, that world is 1.9 gigabytes. So you could put in another whole Grim Dawn into the game and still have room left. So have fun modders. However, if you're planning to update the world, you might want to hold on for what's coming next. Another feature for modders, um, it, we noticed that in Grim Internals there is a feature that lets you have logging on custom games. Uh, that obviously is going away because Grim Internals isn't working fully anymore. So we made that baseline. So in patch 1.2 you'll be able to see the full Lua log and a bunch of other errors that that might pop up during your mod tests, which I imagine is going to help you guys quite a bit because it helps us. What's coming next? What could it be? Could it be 10? I mean, it might be. What is 10 really? 10 is a binary for 2. 2 is the second month of the year. February 8. February has 8 letters in it, and so does Grim Dawn. 8 equals 8. 8 plus 2 also equals 10. And 10 times 5 minus 5 equals 45. And I don't remember where I was going with that. So let's get back to 1.2. Ban Crater Entertainment, please don't. It's, a, it's the only live stream I have, I swear. And I feel like Grim Dawn needs mounts like D4. I don't. I'm not even super happy with the mounts in D4 as they are. I mean, they're plenty to make it better, apparently, but... as they're so clunky, they keep running into everything, and especially with those road blockades and stuff too. But I guess they are planning to address that. Is Grim Dawn 2, version 1.2 coming to Xbox? Yeah, so all our patches release at about the same time window for Grim Dawn, or sorry, Steam, GOG, and Xbox. And that's going to be the same for 1.2. Well, we had some ideas from the Grim Dawn League. We really like the ambush system. Uh, we did talk to the Grim, Grim Dawn League play, er, developers, and we kind of chatted them up about like what stuff did their players enjoy? Like, what were the features that you guys really liked from their leagues? So, might be something in store for that. Any new achievements on the way? I have bad news for all of you that 100%ed the game. Because there will be new achievements in the future. So I'm terribly sorry if you got to 100% on Steam or GOG or wherever your achievements are. You will not be at 100% for long. New bounty system. Um, I one bounty system is one of these those peeves of mine because I kind of stubbed it in years ago, and I've been wanting to make it better since, but it just never seems like the right time to do it. I mentioned before the monster rings will always drop non-legendary. Does this mean epics will always drop then, or is if a monster has more than one MI like Ilgor, will he drop both every time or only one? So when I said mo boss monster and frequency will drop 100% of the time, I mean the non-unique ones like epics or legendary. So any boss that has green monster in frequency will drop one 100% of the time. Any boss that has two will be a 50-50 drop, which actually is usually already the case, so that's not a huge change there.
You don't want us to work for free, supporter pack or whatever ex excuse to throw money at us. I, as I've mentioned earlier, I think a loyalist pack would be pretty cool to do again. We have some fun ideas for some pretty badass armor. So maybe in the near future there will be a loyalist pack number three. And honestly, we appreciate that you guys want to buy that. It means a lot that, you know, we have your loyalty, I suppose I should say. That's why it's called a loyalist pack. Can I please explain the dodge roll more? How fast is it? Is it one of the default mobility skills? So it's going to be a new skill. It's it's sort of like a quick dash that lets you just quickly move through mobs and get out, out of, of a bad spot. So if a boss is about to cast something on you, which brings us to the next feature of 1.2 and something that I feel like the the lead community of builders has been waiting to hear about is that we are actually adding a new mechanic to the game. Well, two mechanics, really. The first one is that we're reworking nullification. So let's actually go over here to my little assistant. Where are you? I should have put him closer. There he is. There's my buddy, Acrolix the Arcane Gazer. You might be wondering why there's an Arcane Gazer when there hasn't been one in the game. Well, that's because all the new hero archetypes are going to be added to all parts of the game. And you can see that he's got this really spiffy icon, which, as soon as it hits me, all of my toggle buffs go off. Just like before. But, as soon as that debuff expires, all my buffs turn back on. So this is how the new nullification mechanic works. When you get debuffed by nullification, all your toggle arrows turn off, all your temporary buffs are purged, but as soon as that debuff window ends, currently it is set to 5 seconds, we'll see how that feels. It is going, that's the number it's going to go into with playtesting, and it's going to be 3 seconds in the Crucible. So if you, miss, if you miss that nullification here and now, you have no excuse, because that guy is like a big beacon. And that's something we've actually done with a bunch of other heroes as well. The second big mechanic we're adding to the game is a new uh, debuff called Sundered. So if a monster sunders your defenses, you will find yourself taking additional percent damage. For example, a, a monster might hit you with a special ability, and that causes you to take 30% additional damage from all incoming attacks. This is a mechanic we're planning to use to replace a lot of the current resist reduction effects that monsters have. The main reason being is resist reduction is actually pretty easy to counter. Um, as long as you overstack your resists, you're not actually going to take any more damage from those abilities. And the only the only consequence of that is that you find that you actually need to stack way more resistances than you normally would. And then bosses like Mogdragon, who has a ton of lightning damage, and a ton of resist reduction to lightning, will end up just tickling you because you just have 180% lightning resistance and it makes no difference. So Sundered is going to be a replacement for that. So certain special abilities that bosses and regular monsters have will Sunder you, causing you to take more damage. So you might want to watch out for some special ab abilities in the future. But you're going to have a nifty baseline evasion ability for that purpose. Um, so multiple effects of Sundered will not stack. The highest value will take effect. So if a boss Sunders you for 40% and a mob hits you for 15%, the 40% will take priority. To um, facilitate avoiding all those tough new attacks, we have actually gone through a lot of the monsters in the game and slow down their special abilities. We're talking like a 10 to 20 percent reduction in their animation speed. So for example you might picture the uh, manticores with their tail strike. That is an example of an ability that will sunder your defenses. But it's going to be quite a bit slower than it was before. So if you're paying attention and you see that tail coming up, you'll be able to avoid it. Same for many other examples. So more dangerous abilities, but more opportunities to avoid them. And one, one example I'll bring up also is Wendigos. So they've had a bit of a zoomy problem for years. So we actually went and fixed their animation speed. They're not going to be running at the speed of sound anymore, so you'll actually be able to outrun them if you need to. And speaking of run speeds, you might notice that I've got these nifty little shrines around here. So these are the shrines from the Shattered Realm. All five of them have been completely overhauled to give you a much more enjoyable experience. All of them are purely buffs now. They last a much shorter amount of time. 
they're cheaper to acquire, and their effects have been completely redesigned. So for example, if you make a pack of Azraka, you'll gain increased movement speed. And when I say increased movement speed, I mean past the run speed cap. So this one will cause you to have increased movement speed and cause your attacks to launch spectral blades at your foes. So let's give that a try. And you'll notice that I'm running quite a bit faster because the buff from Azraka not only gives you 30% movement speed, it also gives you 15% max movement speed. Which is a new stat we've added to the game in 1.2. Did we decide to go back to Grim Dawn due to recent deluge of ARPGs hitting the market? Or was this planned for a while? Well, that's a bit of a long story. Um, the way I would put it as is, we had a bit of an itch to kind of go back t to the way to things we used to do. We kind of missed working on Grim Dawn, and we had some ideas. But actually, one of the main reasons we wanted to go back to Grim Dawn, we'll talk about in a little bit. I almost spoiled it. Let's take a look at another one of the buffs. Shrine of Death will increase your movement speed and make you temporarily invincible. So just go ham on those enemies. They're not going to be able to kill you for those 30 seconds. Amatok will have a chance of triggering Ice Blast when enemies hit you. Ratosh will cause you to sap life from nearby foes as you attack. And finally, Oleron will grant you huge pr increase to offensive ability. So you're just going to be smashing enemies with crits. None of these blessings can be nullified, and they only last for a short amount of time. But for those 30 seconds or so, you're going to be a, li a, a little demigod running through the Shattered Realm. So we think that might be a little bit more fun to kind of spice up your Shattered Realm gameplay. Let's talk about what's next. What did I miss? I mean, on top of all the item changes we're usually planning for a patch, that's all in there. We talked about Sundered. We talked about Relics. Um, tonics of Clarity and Tonics of Reshaping, which allow you to respect your character, used, used to drop from Nemesis bosses as a rare drop. From In 1.2, you will simply be able to craft them from Celestial Smiths. Did we keep the old arcane mechanic? Um, only for players, but that doesn't really make a difference. What happens to the achievement f to use the five uh, shrines activated at the same time? So that achievement is going to be redesigned. So it's simply going to be that you have to use all five shrines at some point in your in your character's gameplay. So as long as you've activated one of each of the shrines, you'll get that achievement. You sent money to my account. Can you get the VIP 1.2 patch now? Maybe, maybe. How much money did you send? You remember when the crate team said they expected to make like 500k on Grim Dawn were officially released and said they made like 1.5 or 2 million from the release, which made them go right into making the first expansion. Well, we did promise the first expansion in the Kickstarter, but you are right. Our initial projections for the game were to sell 500,000 copies, and it ended up doing considerably more than that on just the base game alone, and it's done quite a bit better since. So you guys have been very loyal fans, and well, loyalty pays. Any chance that you're making some of the major skill modifiers appear on lesser versions of Epic's Legendaries? It's always so sad when a character only comes fully online at level 94 when it's basically over. Um, no, we're not planning to bring them into low, lower level items. Is it also possible for me to activate highlight two or more affinities at the same time? I guess I don't know what you mean by affinities. Can you be more descriptive? Can we get the patch now if we pay you an exposure? Exposure? I love exposure! <laughs> It's why I'm on this stream right now, right? There's something I was going to mention. Alright, affinities. So I don't know what you mean by affinities, but mutators are getting a complete overhaul as well. So currently, each of the mutators in the game applies a buff and applies a debuff in various quantities. So if a monster gets, say, like um, Brawler, I forget what they're all called now, they might have gotten increased damage, but maybe less health. So we've completely overhauled all the mutators. They're all going to only be positive effects, which means they're also now stronger. However, all the player mutators are going to be positive mutators, which means when you get a player mutator, you're actually going to get a buff. 
So whatever bonus that might be, you might get some cooldown reduction, you might get additional health, additional damage, additional resistances that make you almost completely immune to a damage type. And we've changed how mutators are rolled. So a, the first positive mutator occurs on the third mutator, and a second one occurs on the fifth mutator. So you will very consistently know that the third and fifth mutator will always be positive, and the others will always be negative. So there's no, no more RNG in terms of that. And, and any of the old boss monster mutators that increased monster resistances are gone. So anything that might have slowed down your gameplay because a monster was suddenly you know 10% more resistant to your damage type, no longer an issue. A bit off topic, have I played Baldur's Gate 3 and enjoyed it? I mean, my opinion Baldur's Gate 3 is that if you're a fan of CRPGs, that is like the game of a lifetime. Like you, you if you love CRPGs, you need to be playing Baldur's Gate 3. It is a fantastic game, and I loved it all the way through. Those guys did a hell of a job. Will there be any source of enemy RR in the game, or do we only care about capping our resists? So there's still some sources of resistance. So there's some unique debuffs that monsters apply. For example, cultists have a curse that might reduce your resist temporarily. So those still exist, but they're much less common, and they're in lower values than a lot of the resist reductions we've tried to use before. So a lot of the boss abilities in the game would apply something like 40% resist reduction to you, kind of in an attempt to overcome all that resist stacking everyone was doing, <clears throat> but that only goes so far. So all of those are gone, and instead you're going to end up sundered. Will the blessings show up in regular gameplay, like shrines in other games? You know, I can see potentially doing that. They are pretty fun, and it's like great just to feel OP for 30 seconds. So I can see potentially putting them out in the world. Uh, be nice if XP potions were available in Devil's Crossing 2. So, I mean, they're they're available where they are for a reason. Any changes to the Crucible? The big changes to the Crucible are with the mutators, and there is <coughs> the addition of nullification. So nullification is actually coming back to the Crucible. Ever since Arcane Heroes were added, nullification was disabled in the Crucible because of how big of an impact it had. But since now you won't have to be frantically toggling all your auras back on, um, that's no longer an issue. So we're going to put it back. And speaking of auras, you might notice that they're not on my bar anymore. They're just on. All toggled buffs are just automatically on when you sign into the game. So you just turn on your, load up your character, all your buffs are on, get moving. There's no need to go through your second quick bar and go toggle one, two, three, four, five to get playing. With class combos who are not soldier, get a buff for health and or damage. For example, it's hard to get a ton of health on pyromancers. Um, I mean, that's kind of by design of having multi-classing. Is it possible for 1.2 to hi activate highlight two or more affinities? Oh, affinities is in the devotion screen at the same time. Uh, we weren't planning on doing a feature like that, so not in 1.2. You really enjoyed secret levels and bosses. Will we continue that way? Maybe, maybe. Will it be a possibility to still play the old game version after 1.2 release, like with a Steam beta version? So there are some of you that might not like some of the big changes we're making to the game. We are going to make version 1.1.9.8 available permanently as a beta branch on Steam. So if you want to play on that version of the game forever, you will have that option. But for the rest of you, moving on to 1.2 will make the most sense, and there might be some good reasons to do that. Will Sunder have an icon appear in like nullification, you're assuming? Yes, Sundered will have a nice big debuff that appears over you to let you know that you're taking additional damage. Does the, the, the changes to mutators apply to all instances of mutators, or only mutators in the Crucible? No, this is across the whole game. So challenge areas, the Shattered Realm, the Crucible, all mutators are universal across those three game modes. <clears throat> what about pets? Well, pets are an active ability, so that's they're not going to automatically get summoned. You would love to see what class skills are in items like Dual Blade, I see. So currently, any skills that apply to your masteries are highlighted. And and that's probably what it will stay as because it might get kind of ridiculous. Can you remove the buffs? Which buffs are we talking about? Hello, Crate. You have legit 750 damn hours in the game and you've been slacking on Forgotten Gods. You have it. You just haven't played through all of it yet. So nice to see we're continuing to give amazing content to play. Any chance we'll be seeing a Grimdon 2 like we're getting a Titan Quest 2. So, as I mentioned earlier in the stream, we are working on a new proprietary engine that, if there is a Grim Dawn 2 someday, that's what it'll run on. 
but engines are a ton of work, turns out. Which is good news and bad news for you, and we'll get to that. Our pets set to aggressive at the start. Yes, another feature of 1.2 is that pets will automatically default to the aggressive stance when you sign into the game. So if you prefer to have all your pets set to aggressive, you're no longer going to have to click through them all when you first sign in. They'll just be aggressive by default. Can you respect them after the maggot area? So we've, we, we're aware that having buffs toggled permanently might be a little challenging for the maggot area. And I will, I will not tell you how you can solve that problem without respecking. I will make it clear. You can do that without respecking. And there is a way to solve that problem being added to the game for you. I will not tell you how or where or what it does, but there's a way to do it. So if you're planning to get to the crate boss, spoiler, um, there will be a way to do it without having to unspec from all your auras. Did anyone decipher the math slide I had up earlier? Please don't try to decipher the math slide. That math slide was utter nonsense. Are there any changes to race skeletons? Uh, no changes to that skill. Can players ever apply Sundered to foes? Uh, we don't have plans at this time to, to add Sundered as a player mechanic. There's already so many ways to build your character around. I'm not sure it's really necessary to add one more layer to it. Do pets get nullified? Yes, pets get, can get nullified, but pets don't have any toggled buffs that can get disabled, so... Use the power pet, please, as a display cool, I'm sure. Let me see. Yep, there you go. The countdown, just like on everything else. What will the challenges be, if any, when you do eventually start working on Grim Dawn 2? <coughs> I, just say, I just say it's nonsense, but there has to be a hidden meaning, right? Uh, the challenges of working on Grim Dawn 2, uh, honestly, the biggest challenge would probably, for me, just off the top of my head, would be deciding which masteries to start with. Because we can't release a game like that with, you know, nine masteries right away. That would be a ton of upfront work. So the toughest thing would kind of be figuring out, like, well, which ones do we start with? I mean, everyone is a fan of some, one of or, or two of them, so, like, how do we decide? Maybe we'll do something new. So we'll see. I mean, it'll be it, it'll be challenging and exciting at the same time. You're a bit late, so you don't know if that question was asked. How does the campaign level progression look like in 1.2? Can you hit max level and farm set items in one playthrough? Um, yes. So as I mentioned earlier, since you missed the question, uh, in 1.2 you'll be able to play through to 100 on any difficulty. If you own, you know, Ashes of Malmoth expansion. If you own Vanilla Grim Dawn, you, the level cap is still 85, which you will be able to play to on normal as well. <coughs> You can't believe how well we did of Grim Dawn the TQ engine. It blew your mind hole. We have upgraded this engine quite a bit. And we're doing it still with 1.2. Skeletons are aggressive now. So, despite people's suspicions, skeletons already defaulted to an aggressive stance. They only have one stance, and it's aggressive. They're always angry. Any plans to make the new engine more modern than the current one? It's very unfriendly, especially when trying to use multiple mods. Um, I do acknowledge that making multiple mods stack in Grim Dawn is pretty tough. That's kind of the engine we inherited. I expect that the new engine will be much friendlier to that, yes. It's something that we're keeping in mind in advance, you know? So, like, since we're building things from scratch, we're like, okay, well, what were the issues we had with the Grim Dawn engine that we can f fix for the crate engine? And so one of them is actually um, the skill system, which is completely modular. So anyone that's kind of meddled with Grim Dawn modding knows that the skill system is fairly rigid, like you have templates that do certain things. You know, you have a, a melee attack skill, you have a projectile skill, you have a projectile fan skill, you know, etc. And all of those do a very specific thing. So in the in our per upcoming engine that we're working on, that system is completely modular, which means that you can have an ability that sends a projectile, which explodes, creating a field of damage, and when that field of damage hits the enemies, it applies a debuff to them. And if that enemy has a debuff to them when they get hit by another ability, that might trigger something else. So that's kind of, it's sort of like, you know, putting pieces together instead of having a fixed frame. And I'm excited to use it in the future. The programmers have done a, a great job so far implementing all that stuff. But it is a lot of work. 
Which exclusive buff will be set on if you have two of those? You, if I need two to have, if I need two to have skills invested in. Um, so, if you notice, I currently have points in. Um, wow, the clock is covering it up, and I don't remember my own skills anymore. Divine mandate. Wow, it's been too long. What was it last time we streamed? It was like three years ago for Grim Dawn. Anyways, Divine Mandate is on, which means that I can no longer put points into Reckless Power. I already have more, more powerful exclusive active, Divine Mandate. So the intent is, and something we probably should have done in the first place, is that exclusive skills are exclusive, which means you can learn one of them. If you currently have two learn on a character, the game will prioritize one of them based on the mastery order and the skill order within that mastery. So I'm sorry. Unfortunately, as far as mechanics go, in order to do the stuff we want to do in 1.2 and beyond, we had to make this change. So if you had a build that had two exclusive skills, that's not going to work in 1.2. If that's absolutely pivotal to your enjoyment of the game, like I said, 1.1.9.8 will be permanently available to you. So if that's the version of the game you like playing and that's what's fun to you, absolutely keep playing that way. There's nothing stopping you and we're definitely not going to get in your way. But in order to make the features we wanted to work on, and in order to do the features we're still working on, we needed to make this change. So that is the next step for Grim Dawn. Did I announce a new class or did you miss it? I don't think you missed anything. What a nullified Hellhound loses Hellfire Aura. So pet buffs are actually undispellable, so that will not be an issue. Grim Dawn 10 announcement. That's right. Will debuffs in general still be reduced by percent damage reduction debuffs like Warcry? Um, yeah, I believe they still will. We already have some invincible pets like Blade Spirit and Summons in Oathkeeper Tree. Any chance for new ones? Um, no, no plans for new pets like that right now. Any chance to have some kind of bestiary tab in the game with info of monsters, their drops, or resistance, some lore maybe? I mean, that would be awesome. It would be a ton of work, though. So I'm, I'm not sure we're going to do something like that. Ten Masters in Grim Dawn 2 confirmed. Yeah, totally. Let's announce that right now. Ten Masters in Grim Dawn 2. Can I show you the new debuff icons below the health bars? Um, Let's see. I'm, let's see if I can get to a dummy that's not killable. I'll, because these guys all die in one hit. What debuff can I apply? Uh, let's see. Oh, that will work. Wait, did I not hit him? Actually, do I even have those on? Display debuffs on target. Yeah, I didn't actually have that feature on. No, I, all right. I'm gonna have to actually go to our buddy, the Gazer, over there, because all the all the dummies in here are immune to debuffs for testing purposes, and those red ones die in one hit. So let's let's go over to our Gazer friend for that preview. More than one mod active at a time, any chance? Afraid as far as mod mod functionality goes, it's still going to be limited to how it worked before. <laughs> No, it's on. Okay, there we go. There you go. See? And let's get away from Gazer over there before I get purged again. Are there really people playing Grim Dawn of Zero expansions in 2023? Believe it or not, there are. There are people that are kind of on the fence that are not sure. And so they pick up just the base game. <clears throat> but I feel like it's weird to, that I have to mention this in the year 2023, but that's kind of the era we're in. All this stuff I'm talking about right now, all these 1.2 features, this is all completely free. So if you own the base game or if you own the expansions, you're getting these, these new additions to the game for free. Like I said, most comprehensive free update Grim Dawn's ever seen. <clears throat> what about shrines? Can you get all devotion points on normal? I don't think there's enough shrines on normal to get all devotion points, no. So that that is not changing. Will you get any new lore in the new patch? No, 1.2 is not going to feature new lore.
Endless farming mode without having to restart. Midtown Madness and Marvel Heroes is the best ARBG farm level. Okay, so you're talking about like you go clear a dungeon and without having to exit the menu, you can go right back into it. So that's not how the engine was built to handle that. So it's not really something we can do, at least not without some major revisions. I'm not even sure if it's feasible, like of the way levels were, bu were built. Because the Shadow Realm, the way it spawns enemies, was built completely differently from the rest of the game. So 10 is not yet answered, right? I don't know. I feel like I answered 10 twice for sure. There were two slides, guys. Steam Workshop integration would be great. Um, at this point, we don't, don't think it makes sense to do Steam integration. Will more snow areas appear? Maybe, maybe. Are there any changes to pathing plan for 1.2? For example, to account for extra mobility, players getting to avoid people getting stuck on terrain when dodging. If you run into a spot where you get stuck on terrain, please report that as a bug, because that's actually a bug location that we need to address, and then we can fix it. Are the three difficulty levels being made into one? Um, no, that is not the plan, but you can skip difficulties already with the um, difficulty skips that are in Forgotten Gods. Would you still need to complete all difficulty levels to get all permanent quest rewards? No. So if you use one of the difficulty merits available in for the Forgotten Gods expansion on, an, on a new character, that character will automatically be able to progress straight to ultimate and have all of the quest rewards from normal and elite difficulty unlocked. Sorry, one more question. Is Crate involved with TQ2 at all? You know, Crate at least had a lot of people who are part of Iron Lore. Hope that still stands true. We are not involved in Titan Quest 2. So that is a different studio under the branch of THQ Nordic that are developing that game. We are not we're not providing any assistance. We're not helping develop it. We're not there to offer advice. They're, that's completely their own thing. And like I said, I wish them luck. I hope they do a great job. Does this dev even play his own game? I don't know. I've been playing so much Furthest Frontier lately. Sorry, I'm still catching up to chat. I feel Apparently, I'm way behind. Patch notes when? Patch notes after this stream. In fact, I will mention that the 1.2 playtest will start after this stream. So if you're looking forward to checking out all the stuff I'm talking about today, after this live stream, we're going to be launching that right into playtest. It's a public playtest. You can just opt right in. And you can get checking out all this new stuff. We look forward to seeing what you guys think. Gazer is the solution to everything. Are the expansions worth it? I don't know. I like to think so. Yeah, people are posting every day on like Reddit and Steam, etc., like asking if the expansions are worth picking up. So, I mean, like I said, people are picking up just the base game. Any game performance optimizations in this up there is that something which just comes with the new engine. So, in terms of optimization, the game is pretty optimized as it is. So, I'm not sure what issue you're having specifically. Will patch 1.2 feature new bosses or dungeons? So, in terms of content, 1.2 does not feature new content. We're not adding new bosses or enemies. We're revamping a lot of the existing content and making it better in all sorts of ways. What is the ET on the patch? Oh, I think I just answered that. Sorry, still catching up. I'm going to have to go faster. Do you still like pineapple pizza more than fluffernutters? Uh, that is such a specific con comparison. How long will the stream go for? I don't know, as long as it needs to. We're not on the schedule here. That's how we roll in, at Crate. Alright, I think I've caught up. Expansion is 10 out of 10. The number 10? What, number 10? Do you guys want to talk about number 10? Like, for real this time. No more trolling. Are you guys actually ready for what 10 is? I, I let, let's see if the chat. No, I I see a no. I see a no. I, someone's not ready. So we have we have to hold on a second. Someone in the chat is not ready for what ten means. Oh, but I do hear a lot of yeses too. Look, guys. As much as one point two is huge for Grim Dawn, what comes after and what I'm about to announce for you is even bigger. 
because officially today, I am proud on the behalf of the whole team at Grand Entertainment to announce that Grim Dawn will be featuring. Are you ready for this? Our third expansion, The Fangs of Astrakhan. So this is going to be another huge addition to the game. It's going to take a while to finish. It's still pretty early on, so I'm afraid I don't have gameplay to show you today. But I can talk to you about what features are coming. But yes, all of you that have been wondering what, what 10 means, we'll get into that in a second, but coming in 2024 most likely, because we always give you more and we end up delaying things, but our plan, our expectation is to release this expansion in 2024. The third expansion to Grim Dawn will feature your journey into the Astrakhan region. And that kind of leads back to an earlier question we had about why we're developing this stuff now. Why we're back working on Grim Dawn. And this actually leads back to our RTS. So in this expansion, we're going to be talking about the Kern, which are a nomadic people living in the Astrakhan Karn region. And you will be delving into their history and figuring out why they're suddenly traveling back east into renewed conflict. And these, these people, the Kern, are actually featured prominently in our upcoming RTS. So we wanted to give you guys a little bit of backstory about them before you get to play our RTS. So in case you haven't figured that out yet, the, the RTS will feature something back in time in Grim Dawn history. It's a prequel, and it'll heavily feature the Kern, it'll feature the Aralon Empire, and it'll feature Arcovia. And that's why we wanted to add this expansion. Now, what does 10 mean? Let's talk about features, huh? So feature list. This is the real one. This is this is not a troll slide, I swear. So Fangs of Astern Karn expansion is going to be another huge addition to the game. Like I said, a new chapter of the story, a huge new environment to explore. And let's go into the feature list one by one. You will conquer the Ascendant Game Boat. Anyone that's played the endgame in Grim Dawn, Shattered Realm, Crucible probably noticed that the campaign isn't really all that challenging for you after a while. So what we're going to do is we're going to revamp that bitch. You're going to be able to enable a new difficulty on top of Ultimate called Ascendant Mode that umps the difficulty dramatically. So if you've been conquering Shadow Realm like 65, 70, we haven't really finalized which difficulty will be the standard, you will be able to make the whole campaign world that difficulty. Which means you'll be able to play endgame content and get in-game loot by playing the campaign. So if you enjoy kind of exploring the world again, like feeling like it's all fresh and exciting and fun, like this mode will be for you. And this brings us to 10. A transformative tenth mastery. So, you guys have been wondering about this, and yes, it's true. Number ten means the tenth mastery is being added to Grim Dawn. The Berserker mastery will feature frantic, frenzied game melee gameplay, and allow you to shapeshift into beast-like forms. A new mechanic coming to Grim Dawn, and one I imagine modders will have a lot of fun with. I mean, come on, those Diablo mods that had a druid without being able to shapeshift. Uh, hello. So that's going to be a lot of work. They said it was impossible. We really thought that fitting a 10th Master in would be challenging. But you know what? We're up to the task. We're making it happen. So a 10th Mastery brings the total number of Mastery combinations to 45. It's insane to even think about. But I bet you guys are going to love it. Exploring a new chapter of Cairn, as I mentioned already, um, that's going to feature the Kern. You'll head west into the Kern lands of Astrakhan. You will, excuse me, got to get my nose for this part. Um, you will journey west into the rugged wilderness of Astrakhan and content of the mighty Kern. Discover the dark legacy that continues to haunt these nomadic people and again drives them east towards renewed conflict. You will trek across the glorious snowy peaks of Astrakhan, delve into frozen caverns, and explore ancient forest valleys and breathtaking hot springs as you seek to purge the corruption tainting this idyllic landscape. A 
Uh, next one, potion customization. So part of the reason why we overhauled potions and put them on the hotbar the way we did is we're actually going to overhaul potions again in the expansion. You will have the option of speaking to an alchemist to customize your potions. So if you want them to be healing plus extra stuff, you want them to have shorter cooldowns, you want them to have additional charges, you'll be able to do all those things. You'll be able to decide between what kind of containers your potions will have. You'll be deciding what ingredients you put into them to change their effects. And you will have the option to do that to two potion slots. And so that will give you something to do in this new expansion. Hunting for those ingredients to customize your potions as you see fit. More lore about McDragon seems very likely considering his close ties to the Kern. So lore-wise, we'll build in the story of the vanilla game and Ashes of Mounder, who will be separate like Forgotten Gods. I would say it's more separate since it is more of a side story. It's to broaden the world rather than continue the story that happened in Ashes of Malmuth. As we've said before, in terms of continuing the story onward beyond Ashes of Malmuth, it really makes sense for a sequel. But to tell you more about what's happening in the world of Cairn, it does make sense to tell a story like this. Affix Transmutation. So those of you that have played the Grim Dawn League mod were aware that there's ways to reroll affixes in that in their um, league. We're going to make that official. In the expansion, you will be able to speak to the inventor to reroll your prefixes and affixes on magic and rare items, just like said items. So if you've got this one item that's almost perfect, you'll be able to reroll it. You'll be able to change the affixes, and you'll be able to reroll the seed if you wish as well. The Crucible Expanded. If you love the Crucible, and I know many of you do, Crucible is a very popular DLC for a reason. Um, we're going to give you 30 additional Crucible waves to challenge yourself, which means updated Crucible loot, which will progress much further and give you even better rewards. And we're going to do a similar thing to the Shattered Realm. So Shadow Realm is going to receive new levels, it's going to receive new boss arenas to kind of give you more variety. And something that I actually didn't mention for 1.2, we're going to be adding a new um, waystone that will allow you to progress all the way to Shattered Realm 90 with loot. So if you thought 75 was too easy and you like getting loot, you'll be able to go all the way to 90. Yes, can your build even do wave 182, 200, and sub 420? God, if anyone does that in 4, in four minutes, 20 seconds, I'm going to be really upset. So you start this DLC after all the DLCs or before. So just like Forgotten Gods, you'll be able to kind of choose when you want to go into it. As you can imagine, it kind of branches off from the Fort Icon region. So once you install the DLC, you'll find that there's a new scout in Fort Icon that will inform you of some activities hap happening in the snow regions to the west. Will we be able to download the amazing artwork of the expansion as a wallpaper on the forum? Yes, we're going to put this stuff up for you to be able to make into wallpapers if you wish, just like for other, um, other arts we've done in the past. This is free. So the DLC is not free. This is, a, this is an ex full fledged expansion. Um, we don't have a price to announce today because we're still kind of in the process of determining exactly how big this expansion will be. But I expect it'll be on the order of our previous expansions. So somewhere in the 15 to 18 dollars range. Do you play existing characters in the expansion or new level cap? We are not raising, raising the level cap. Your character progression will be from quest rewards and the new potion customization. Or you can always roll a new character. As always with every expansion, there'll be hundreds of new items for you to discover, new monster and frequence. We're actually going to be going back through some of the older content and adding monster and frequence to older monsters as well. And of course, there'll be new epics and legendary items. And speaking of epic items, you'll be able to awaken epic items to turn them into legendary quality. Now, this will not apply to every epic item in the game, at least not initially. But we'll be able to take all those epic items that might not necessarily be viable for endgame and make them viable for endgame with new new stats, new procs, new skill modifiers. Which means even more loot options for you. And finally, two new factions. So you will be able to contend with the Nomadic Kern and help them rekindle old alliances, but you will also have to face off against their darker history and we'll get into what exactly that means once the expansion is closer to release. But you guys can expect that Grim Misadventures will be resuming in the future. 
So you guys can look forward to getting little sneak peeks of what's in store for you soon. Too much hype. Can I make a giant spider one of the shapeshifts? Uh, so we have some ideas for the most likely two shapeshifts will be for the Berserker Mastery, but we'll most likely be able to also grant you shapeshifts on items. Maybe as a relic? Will it be possible to make skill modifiers for potions? Ah, well that brings me into another mechanic we're planning to add. Skill charges. In um, Grand Dawn Expansion 3, one of the new mechanics we'll be adding for abilities will be the ability to cast abilities... Wow, I said ability a lot. Cast skills multiple times in a row before they're on cooldown. So, for example, you might have your evasion skill have two charges, which means you will do evade, evade, and then you'll have to wait for the cooldown to tick down before those charges refill. How much will the new DLC weigh? Uh, I don't know, it's probably about 10 pounds. Any plans to homogenize damaging auras on items that have similar range? Well, it's all different between 4 to 6. Different range on what? Like how far they reach? I think they're pretty consistent. Um, the expansion is not adding more devotions. Our focus is on the other mechanics in this one. Any changes to the difficulties or stashes? So I've already talked about the difficulty changes which are coming in 1.2, so you don't have to wait for the expansion for that. In terms of stashes, um, what we'd like to try to do, we'll see how if it's feasible, is to give you a dedicated component and crafting stash tab, which will automatically siphon those things out of your inventory and into storage. Let's put that on the maybe pile though, because we actually have to see how feasible that is. Any extra devotion points or no? No extra devotion points, just like in Forgotten Gods. Will there be new weapon types? We are not planning to do new weapon types. Major question, will all this be on console as well? Yes, absolutely. So if you're playing on Xbox, you'll definitely be able to enjoy Fangs of Astrakhan next year. Let's bring that awesome key art back on. Will there be any supporter packs to help support the team? Um, as I've mentioned before, I think a lot of this pack 3 would make sense. We have some cool ideas for armor for that. Mentioned potion customization will be changes to the tinctures and craftable potions or removal or new additions. So we, we're still kind of deciding what to do with those. We might end up kind of combining the two into one and letting you kind of integrate what those tinctures did as buffs for your main potions. New wallpaper confirmed. Any hint on which material is used for graphics transmutation? It will be a new material. Has there been any consideration of hosting official Grimdon ladders via Create Entertainment online services? So, I mean, you kind of answered your own question there. That's a huge endeavor. We'd have to have official servers. We'd have to have anti-cheat. We'd have to have all sorts of stuff to make that happen. The infrastructure would be a huge undertaking. Hairstyles to Illusionist to get this one from Mommy. <laughs> Uh, I think hairstyles would be pretty cool. Uh, maybe it would it would work in the illusionist. The problem with hairstyles though is that there would have to be a hair, like a head slot, so you wouldn't be able to have any helmets on. Who made this art? It's so good. That would be Sandcaster, one of our artists. Would there be possible to show the skill without bonus points from gear and tooltip or something like that? Um, I think we'll actually be able to fit that in. Yeah, maybe in one point two. Forgot to ask one important question. It's about transmogs. Could you be able to make transmog slots, not items? Like, no matter what you wear, it's always as, as was a set. Um, so it, we kind of opted to do one or the other, and we opted to have it be on the gear instead of the slots. I can certainly see the appeal of that, too, but not at this time. Could I please go through the new options tabs before the end of the stream? Sure. Why don't I pop those open right now while I keep answering questions? So not much is changing on the first tab. Second tab is some old stuff and new stuff. This one is all new, so we had to move all the health bar stuff. So there's some additional options for health bars I forgot to talk about. You'll be able to make health bars bigger if you want, and display percent values as well. How hard will Ascendant difficulty be? Let's just say if you're playing Endgame now and it's challenging, they'll be on that level. Is progress made in the playtest permanent or will it get wiped later? Um, our playtests are always public and permanent. Um, we do recommend backing up before you play on the playtest because bugs can happen, but 
we don't have any plans to like wipe you or anything like that. Will the expansion have a new skeleton key room? So, yep. So post release for Fangs of Astrakarn, we're planning to do two roguelike dungeons. Um, those aren't going to be available when Fangs of Astrakhan is released, but we will add them as free content updates after that. Can we please have a battle pass with FOMA mechanics and real money tier skipping? Slash sarcasm. Oh, I don't know. I think you've got options for that already. Are there new rewards for playing Ascendant? Yes, there will be some unique rewards available only through Ascendant difficulty. Do you have any thoughts about seasons? My thoughts are that to do them officially would be a huge undertaking at this point. So I'm not sure we'll ever make that official. 4K resolution support better? I mean, you already have UI scaling, so what's 4K missing, I guess, would be the question. Are there already definitions and class name combinations of, like with the other expansions? Uh, so you mean like when you combine Berserker with all the other masteries? Yeah, we already have names for those. Will there be more recipes with more relics? Yep, there will be new relics. In fact, we will most likely let you upgrade Tier 2 relics to Tier 3. So if you like a Tier 2 skill a lot, or maybe even Tier 1, you'll be able to use it as an endgame item. Character select background changes. So in the you will be able to select the main menu. That is coming in 1.2. It's not finished yet. I think that kind of covers the options here. But... Um, it will be available before 1.2 releases officially. Any plans to create servers? Not at this time. How do you split the team in regards to the development of Farthest Frontier? So, Farthest Frontier has its own dedicated team. I was, and still am, helping out the Farthest Frontier team, and I will continue to do that, but I'm also splitting some of my attention to bring you more Grim Dawn stuff. And kind of one of the benefits of the engine is taking a lot of programming work is that we do have some art and design resources available to develop new content for you. What about localization in other languages than English? So as of 1.2, Create Entertainment will be taking over localization for the game. We thank all of our translators that have done it all these years. You guys have done us a tremendous service and I hope all the keys I've showered you with are enough of a thank you. Because if you hadn't done it all those years ago, Grim Dawn would only be in English right now. But we're going to take take the torch, if you will. And from 1.2 onward, all new text will be localized uh, through us officially. So you will no longer have to download any language packs for the game. You will simply be able to select the supported languages in the game options. Kind of like it works on the console currently. any options to increase the FPS. So the only way to increase FPS is to turn on video options or get a more powerful PC. With so many class combinations, are you planning a profile system like in WoW so you can swap your Warlord, for example, between different builds and loadouts? We are not planning loadouts, no. Can you shapeshift into a crate? Maybe as a new secret quest reward. That would be fun. I'm not sure what the crate would do but I could do it. Any new relics for Summoner? It's too early to say. You don't have a question, you just want to say it's amazing to see actual passion developers who know what a real RPG is. Thank you, Crate. Uh, we appreciate hearing that. Can you fix the new character creation bug? You need to log out or go to multiplayer skin for a new character to appear. Um, I don't know what would be causing that. That seems like a file permissions issue. Is it possible that in the near future the graphics engine from Grindon will be changed to Unreal 5? I'm afraid not. That's not how game engines work. We would have to just remake the game, basically. Do we change the progress of the game, or will we still have to play the game three times for the end game? So, if you have Forgotten Gods, you can already skip two difficulties on, on new characters. Where can you get one of these snazzy crate shirts I've got? Well, the easiest way is to work for crate. And that's actually the only way. New Nemesis? Uh, yep. In fact, what we want to do is um, have an additional new Nemesis for older factions. So the Ethereals and Chthonians already have two Nemesis bosses. We actually want to make that so 
all the other factions do too. So two nemesis for Order of Death's Vigil, two for Kaiman's Chosen, two for the Eldritch, etc. So a lot more fancy endgame boss options for you to really freshen things up. Would you like would you like a reset button? Yeah, we've already talked about that. Can you use other mastery skills like race skeletons while shapeshifting into something. So we're still working out exactly how the shapeshifts will work. So I'm not really ready to talk about that mechanically. But I mean, it, part of the game is having mastery combinations, so it's gonna work together some way. Cold damage modifiers. I guess I will mention that the Berserker mastery primarily centra focuses on the cold and bleeding damage types with transmuters that are centered around chaos, thus the corruption in the current story. How big will the new world be? I expect the overworld will be a little bigger than Forgotten Gods, but we'll see how big it turns out. Like, it's not finished yet. We'll see how big it gets. Hmm. Now the game will have four difficulties. Will you have to clear the game four times? No. So it's not a fourth difficulty in the sense that it's like normal, elite, ultimate, ascendant. Ascendant mode is like veteran difficulty on normal. So you will you can toggle ascendant mode on for ultimate difficulty, and it will just take carry over all of your progress on ultimate, and you're just going to continue playing as you were. Any buffs to components and devotions in patch 1.2. So every patch f features many buffs. So D devotions included. I don't recall any component changes off the top of my head. Barbarian class combinations have a name already. Give us one of them. Let's see. Let's see. We have the Dreadblade as one. You can try to figure out which one that is. Come on, Zentai, learn from Mill Brooks. Merchandising, merchandising, merchandising! Yeah, we need plushies! We need mugs! ETN 1.2, after this stream. I mentioned the forms to have a way for bosses to be, make them more rewarding. What did I mean? I mean to make the path to bosses more exciting, and I mean to make the boss rewards themselves more rewarding. But mainly just the fact that just to get to the boss should feel like it's a bigger reward. And part of that was cleaning up all those loot tables. A new, me new mega boss like Ravager? Of course. Can't have an expansion without a super boss or two. Are you hiring web developers by chance, asking for a friend? I'm afraid we're not hiring web developers right now, but we are always look on the lookout for great programmers. So if you're a programmer interested in working at Crate, feel free to apply. Can Berserker play as ranged? Not only in melee. So Berserkers do specialize in melee, but they can excel with ranged weapons. They are particularly good at dual wielding. Can you can you fix the merchant stand in Devil's Crossing? That corpse is starting to smell. <laughs> but you've more exciting adventures elsewhere to worry about. They'll clear that body out in time. Will there be more secret quests and new expansion? Um, they wouldn't be secrets if I told you they were in there. Corba the Mastery. Something interesting for hardcore mode. Isn't hardcore mode already going to be pretty interesting with the Sundered mechanic? Is the game engine going to get upgraded? 1996 graphics are getting old. Oof, 1996 graphics. Ouch, Right, that hits right here. New Ascended Achievements. You can expect there will be more achievements in the game. Some of them will probably be related to Ascendant mode. Is it possible to make a character move while channeling spells? So that's what I have Reckoning is already, actually. Ascendant works just like Veteran, exactly. More components in the expansion? No new components. There's already way too many components in the game. If there's any components that are endgame viable, that are that are, should be endgame viable but are not, we can definitely improve that. Can I show examples of some max movement speed options? So that's what the shrines were. There might be some other ways to get max movement speed, too. Shut up and take my money. I'd love to. As soon as we can let you, we will. 
Arcanus plus Berserker would be OP, right? I don't know. Any more OP than our combinations? More plushies. More plushies might be cool. I mean, now that we're doing another expansion, I can see working with makeshift again to give you guys more plushies. Is it possible to work remote for Crate? Um, yes, since I'm literally talking to you from my office at home. We are 100% remote. The only caveat is that you do have to be a US citizen if you're thinking about applying. So sorry if you are in, based in Europe, I'm afraid you cannot apply to Crate. How does Berserker come into Nightblade then? Well, for one, it can transform into animals. That's a slight difference. Bows are not incoming. Would I recommend a new character for new content? Yes, I would recommend rolling a Berserker. Any chance of okay, yeah, 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 we've got your opinions on our engine. Since we announced Green Ground 2 is somewhere on the horizon, it will be created with seasons in mind. Um, I really can't say what kind of features we would have in Grim Dawn 2 right now. It's way too early to tell. Any plans on creating new weapon types like spears or bows? Not at this time. Will the Berserker have a new auto attack skill? Yes, it will. Will it, When will the expansion get added? It seems so you can wishlist as soon as we have some sexy screenshots to share with you. If movement rooms will stop being augments for metals, what can you augment metals with? I guess we'll find out. Do I have more to show you for the features of Grim Internals that are coming to 1.2? So I mentioned thicker health bars that briefly got shown here. Let's see if I can actually... I had big boss health bars on, big monster health bars you can enable too, but I don't... I guess I can go back to our gazer buddy again. But I don't actually have them on, do I? Display monster health bars there. There, those are thick. So if you like thicker health bars, that's your option right there. Any new spawn points being added for the more difficult refs to farm, like Kaiman's Chosen. Um, so speaking of Kaiman's Chosen, Order of Death's Vigil, we're actually going to double the reputation gains for those and triple them for the outcast. Thanks, Zentai, for great work and a new addition. Salutations from Poland. Any quality of life, like shortcuts to move items between bags? Um, not at this time, I guess. Steam page one. I mentioned the forms 100% drop for monster and frequency. Is that still the case? Yes, for bosses that drop green monster and frequency. Can I share information about the 10th mastery, skill passives, etc.? Um, while we do have a pretty good idea of what the mastery is playing like, there's still a lot of tech that is in kind of in limbo. So I don't want to talk about that yet, but don't worry. We will do Grimace adventures in the, f in the future that are going to go in depth into what we're doing for the game for new features, new areas, new monsters, and of course the new mastery. Any news on Grimm Tunnels Incorporation? You really need game speed option. Game speed is something we're not going to make official, I'm sorry. Obsidian Defiler plushie. That'd be kind of fun. It's a good monster. Show the sexy art instead of options again. Sure, let's go back to the sexy art. Will there be any rings? They'll give us additional points in all skills or at least per mastery. No. Um, all mastery or skills to mastery are very powerful bonuses and they're very carefully distributed, so they're not going to appear in new slots. Will there be ways to get more detailed info on your pets in-game? We are planning to let you see your pet crowd control resistances in the character sheet. Are we hiring Python programmers and our data analysts? So what we need mostly from programmers is expertise in C++, because that's what we're developing all of our games on. So if you have um, good knowledge of C++. I mean, if you're an expert in Python, but you have good, decent experience in C++, that's reasonable too. It's really all about like how hard you're willing to work and you know if you can show the skills necessary. Does one want to have any skips to dungeons? So I've talked about that as something we want to do. Um, that's not coming in 1.2. What we would like to do is add some ways to get to certain parts of the game quicker and that would be coming in Fangs of Astrakhan.
Can I give you some hints of forms? I I do want to. I we we have two forms in mind that are both really cool. And I really want to talk about them, but like I said, we're not quite ready yet. We don't even have the final art for them yet. So it's gonna be some time. Five more stash tabs, geez, that'd be a lot. Huge thank you, Zentai and the team. It was great to play and translate Grim Dawn. Can't wait for the new expansion. New expansion, that's just nuts. You never would have expected. Neither were we. But here we are. Can I talk a little bit about Genesis of the Crucible? So I did talk about that already a bit. Fangs of Astrocon will feature 30 more waves. There's changes to mutators. There's the addition of nullification as well. So that'll change things up. The Sundered mechanic, of course. That armor set is so aesthetic. It is. I bet you'll be running into that character in game. Our new features from 1.2 on the PTR. Do we have to wait for the stream to end to test it? So it'll be on, on uh, playtest very soon. Don't worry. Probably as soon as this stream's over. <laughs> Will more stash tabs lag out and crash the game when you're close to other players in multiplayer? Um, I wonder where that reference could be to. Will the new expansion be the last for Grim Dawn? I'm going to tell you right now that just like Forgotten Gods was the last expansion for Grim Dawn, Fangs of Astrakhan will be the last expansion for Grim Dawn. And it's an I have no idea anymore, apparently. <laughs> Who knows? <laughs> Maybe we'll just keep adding expansions until we just call it Grim Dawn 2. How hard is it to get American citizenship? Citizenship, um, Probably harder than it used to be. We're getting a new expansion. The current expansions are 10 out of 10 iron well spent. Are there going to be sounds when a purple double rare drops like there was in GI? Well, let's see. Let's pick up this double rare I have over here. And why don't I drop them down? And why don't I drop this epic item? Or sorry, legendary item. I hope that answers the question. And let's pick up these for later. In case I ever need them. Cheating in a double rare is quite a bit of work. Crate is doing transformations that are different than other games, right? I mean, I think you might see things that are traditional and things that are not. Any rebounds on physical resistance is coming. Its availability seems to determine what's playable and what's not. While I would argue that's not exactly true, we are nerfing monster physical damage in 1.2. Day night toggle in 1.2, maybe, Ye maybe yes. Let's go into the video options where you have the ability to toggle fog. And over here, you have the day night cycle. So yes, these are two accessibility features that are coming from Grim Internals and being made official. Any chance for increased bag size, I like Grim UI X. So our UI is actually based on the minimum resolution we support, which is why everything is sized the way it is. So making things way bigger than that would actually be a problem. Oh, right. I I showed I showed you options in the menu, except I'm showing the key art. So let's open up the menu again for a second. So day night cycle is right here in the first tab, and fog option is right here in the video tab. And back to key art. any new playable errors in 1.2. So in terms of content, 1.2 does not feature new content. It features revamps to existing content. So making the stuff that's already in the game fresh and exciting again. Fangs of Astrakhan will feature new content. And whenever we do free content update post Fangs of Astrakhan, that will also be for the Fangs of Astrakhan expansion. Will the mastery only feature of shapeshifting or bring it cool other things to combine with other masteries? Um, as with all of our masteries, it will not just be about shapeshifting. So it's going to be about brutal melee combat and a little bit of Astrakhan magic. How much of the new map in percent will be covered in snow? That's a little early to say, but it is featuring a very chilly region of the world, so there will be a lot of snow. There's also going to be some hotter areas. No new weapon types. You know it's a big, big mammoth on the background, yeah? It's uh might be featured prominently in the RTS. 
<laughs> BRB learning C++. I am way behind in chat again, aren't I? They have a rough ETA on DLC. It's expected in 2024. Can we get a new endgame system even if it costs money like the Crucible? Well, that's what Ascendant Mode is for. Pets, mounts. We're not adding mounts. There might be new pets. Please let you increase the HUD more. It's tiny in 4K, even with the highest settings. So if you're playing in 4K and the HUD is too, too small, you can actually go into the options file and increase it way beyond what the um, slider lets you do. How many people are working for Crate these days? What is the working style like? I think we're at about 19 people right now, 20? I'm losing track. You'd think I'd know these things. Uh, what's it like working here? Well, I'm working from my office at home, so that's pretty great. My commute is pretty short. We've always worked remotely, so when when the whole pandemic thing happened, we were kind of like, well, we're already doing this, so... Wait, is the Forgotten Gods promo guy actually Riggs? Yes! 17 more expansions confirmed. Can we get a sneak peek, sneak peek on any of the original soundtrack? Not yet, because the music isn't ready yet. About localization, can you still upload one more revision of some little fixes? I'm afraid not. It has now been locked down, and downloads are no longer possible. So, again, we thank you for everything you've done up till now, but we're going to take it from here. Front this Frontier and Grimdon crossover when? I mean, have you seen that one merchant? He has really good prices on meat. Now that we have 1.2, when is 1.3? God, let's not talk about 1.3 yet. We haven't even released 1.2 yet. Almost caught up, I think. Can we have an easier method of crafting relics? Or some of the rerolling the crafting bonuses. So relics are going to be way easier to craft in 1.2. Can you lower the sound of the sound beams only? Um, they're on the effect layer, so I guess not only, not exclusively. Let's be real, we just want to see the art. Well, there it is. Is this chat still going? Rainbow modded new expansion, so no rainbow modded this time. German dubbing voicings play, plan for the written NPC text, so at this time, Grindon will remain English only when it comes to the voiceovers. Will the patch 1.2 notes drop after the stream, or will they still need to be finalized? The patch 1.2 notes, which I will make clear are not final notes, they're playtest notes, will drop after the stream, including a lot of the information we've talked about right now. Did we hear about Passage of Chaos Doors? Haven't I already done that? 1.9.7 remain on beta along with 1.9.9. Um, some people didn't want to upgrade to GI not being updated. Um, yes, we'll leave that on if you want. Will things of Astrocon feature new totems for the new hostile faction? Yes, they will. Can I pretty please give you wolf pets? Give you four wolf pets or even ten wolf pets. I think wolf pets would be pretty cool. We'll see what we can do. That's right, guys. The 1.2 beta is after the stream ends, so more questions means the beta is delayed. A $20 battle pass with a flying whale mount. Gotta get with modern times. It's true, we are really not appealing to the whale demographic, are we? There are three zones that are not implemented. Are you going to implement them? I don't know what you mean by three zones. Do we have plans on using AI in our development, like AI dubbing or some design? I don't feel like AI is quite there yet. I've actually tried using ChatGPT for some like fantasy stuff I was doing like on my own and like I asked it to make me a unique list of 20 fantasy names and it repeated the same names like five times. So not really a unique list, is it? So I'm not sure that the, the features are quite there yet. More characters from public 1.2 test carry over to the 1.2 release. Yes, they will. I do recommend backing up though. Will the new skill mobility feature come into playtest? Yes, so right now, as 1.2 is going to playtest, it is not going to have that in, but it is something we're going to add in a new 
playtest build. So all that mobility stuff I was talking about will be um, part of the playtest later. Stop the questions! Please, I want to get back to work! Is the beta exclusive to Steam or also available on GOG? So as far as our playtests go, they are exclusive to Steam, I'm afraid. We're not going to maintain beta builds across two different storefronts. Sorry, GOG players. Love the work that went to Grim Dawn. A pure solo, single player, fun, engaging RPG. Awesome work and amazing to see more content coming. Glad to hear it. What should you back up before the playtest? You should back up your save folder. I've got up. I've got up to the chat. The people demand haunted crab plushie. Hmm? That's an idea. Is the drawing style of the new art a bit different from the previous ones? I mean, it's a little different, I would say, but it's just kind of how every art piece turns out. It's always a little different. Zentai is in questions hell. That's okay. It's what I'm here for. Any plans for extra Monster Totem tiers or any updates to them? I'm, I think I'd, Monster Totems are in a pretty great place. We are going to add a new type of Monster Totem for the new creatures in expansion. But besides that, no, we're not adding a new tier. But I think Ascendant mode will make those totems pretty dangerous. Will you get paid if you apply to Crate? I mean, you'll get paid if you work for Crate. I don't think you're going to get paid for applying to Crate. How do we get into the playtest? You will once it's up, you will be able to opt into it through the Steam betas branch. Do I stream myself doing any games or design stuff or just on the crate channel? I always talk about how I should do those things and I just never find the time for it. So I don't know if I'm gonna say I will. I don't know if you guys what ideas you guys have for me streaming potentially. I could potentially do more crate streams now that we're doing another expansion here. But yeah, I guess I guess say on the forum, what exactly would you like to see me stream? And we can think about it. Does Zenta have any favorite tabletop games? I feel like you might like Gloomhaven. You haven't tried it. Well, I mean, I do I do role-playing tabletop with my group of friends here, for sure. In terms of other board games, Betrayal House on the Hill is a, is a fun one, especially the Legacy one. Will the roguelike dungeons be awesome and cool? They will be awesome, and one of them might be more hot than cool. Am I aware of issues with multiplayer co-op, like other players' characters not moving on screen even though they're actively moving and attacking the enemy? So that would be desync. And um, I guess if you guys report it, it's something we could eventually look into. But something like that is very specific of a problem. That, that also depends entirely on your connections to each other. Since multiplayer and Grimdon is person to person, like there's some limits to what we can control in that relationship. As a game dev who did try to do more UTV stuff for a while, it does cut into precious game dev time. It does. And if I do it in my free time, then it's cutting into free time. And then when am I supposed to play Baldur's Gate 3? Although I just finished that. We want Zentai creating memes to troll people on Reddit streams. I, I, that, that does sound fun. But how many more tents can I really post? Will yellow white items have a purpose in 1.2, or can we expect an auto-convert to cash feature? Well, considering that yellow and white items virtually don't drop at higher levels, I don't think you'll need that feature. Are we developing Titan Quest 2? We are not. That is a different development team for a different company. We do not own the Titan Quest IP. You should make a Grim Dawn board game. Don't tell Crate. Any plans for buffing Nemesis loot? So, as with the Ascendant mode, all loot will be better because it's going to be tougher. What system do I run when it comes to TTRPGs? Um, so, I actually run my own system that I'm developing on, on my own free time. And maybe in the future you'll learn more about that from me. But that's a topic for a different day and not related to Crate stuff. You really enjoy playing at 1.5x x speed. Yeah, so that's, as far as we're concerned, that's kind of a cheat, and we're not going to make that official, I'm afraid. You just joined. Did I hear new expansion? New expansion? Yes. You might want to go back through the recording of the stream to learn more about that, and we'll post all this info online, too. Is it possible to auto-pick up components and materials, quest items, or etc.? That's already an option. Where, um, so 1.2 is going to add an option to make that radius bigger. Thanks for answering your questions, and thanks to the team for this awesome game. You are welcome. 
Now post 11s. Make the 11th mastery. Please don't make me make an 11th mastery already. We could hire or support someone to do YouTube for us. You know a guy. Hmm, hmm. I guess I'd have to hear what this guy has in mind. Why exactly is the expansion northern theme? Don't get me wrong, you love. Just curious. Well, thematically speaking, two reasons. Uh, we wanted to talk about the Kern, who originate from Master Karn. And two, a snow theme is kind of the logical next step in terms of the environments we've already covered. As apparently the Grim Dawn League people came to the same conclusion. What technology changes, if any, have I made to the game engine? Okay, for that you're going to have to catch up, I'm afraid, because that's a lot of stuff to recover. Recover. Well, I said the difficulty dungeons have better drop quality. Absolutely. Crate is the best. Stream never going to end because Zenta is like 30 minutes behind. No, I'm not. I'm like one minute behind at most now. Do we at Crate play PoE? So we check out all the games in the similar genres that we work on. Like we've checked out a ton of ton builders working for Frontier. We've checked out a ton of action RPGs working on Grim Dawn. So we have definitely played Path of Exile and we're going to check out Path of Exile 2 when the time comes. Can I not drop the playtest today? You got ICC PTR to practice. Mm. Grimdon needs a tropical jungle. That would be a cool environment too. New expansion set in Brazil when? Maybe if there's a new expansion for. Thank you so much, Zenta and all the team at Crate. You are welcome. <laughs> let the let let me end the stream. All right, guys, final questions. I'm going to get back to work, and I'm going to let you get into 1.2. Any good news for gun sorcerers? Um, I can't think of anything specific. There's always buffs and changes along the way. Favorite Spice Girl. Who did I romance at Baldur's Gate 3? Shadowheart. And then it bugged out. Like, she kept having dialogues that wouldn't match what I was doing in the game. Oh, well. It's a huge game. An idea. Could it decrease the cooling of the health energy potions? Increase the speed of energy regeneration, please? Thank you. Yeah, so that's exactly the kind of stuff that potion customization will let you do in the expansion. Imagine not romancing the bear. That's fair. For a while there in my game, I thought the bear was dead, so... Turned out he wasn't. It's fine. He was fine. Won't the lady in the keyyard be kind of cold in that outfit? Well, she's a tough Kern lady. And you'll learn more about just how tough the Kern are soon. How do we play the PTR for 1.2? You'll have to opt into it in Steam betas. Alright, guys. Thank you for stopping by the stream. I hope we have met and exceeded your expectations today with 10 and 1.2. So be sure to check out 1.2 when it comes out very soon. And we do hope you look forward to what's going to be coming in Fangs of Astrakarn. So thank you guys. Take care. We'll see you next time. And stop by those Grimace adventures.